shush. <laughs> I will not shush. Like she says, it is my job to talk. Go. <laughs> okay. They're trying to record. Mm. Welcome to Two Sides. I'm Adisa. I'm Perla. And today we're talking about mental health. A very fun topic. Uh, so we're going to start with basic stuff. Uh, don't get offended. One, this is going to be very hard because not everybody believes in mental health right off the bat. So what my lovely person here, Adisa, is going to do is give you a definition of what mental health is. According to the Webster Dictionary, mental health is a noun defined as a person's condition with regards to their phys- psychological and emotional well-being. Now, that's a general, general kind of uh, definition. And our definition is more like... My definition is more like in your spiritual, your mental well-being, things like anxiety, depression, PTSD, anything that has to do with your mental state first. I'm not saying physical can't happen because it does follow... But mental definitely first. And mine is just, your brain is just kind of messing you over. It's not your fault. It's just chemicals in your brain imbalancing things. And sometimes that can just lead to more physical stuff that's going to happen. See, here's the thing. We're going to be talking about different things. And first, what's going to start with what kind of mental health and how do you deal with yours? I'm personally of one that I am very, take the bull by the horns. So when... I have mental health, I have anxiety, I'm diagnosed with depression and PTSD as well because of other things. And unfortunately, it did not go away and people were just like, it's okay. Some people were like, give it some time or some people were like, it's not real, don't believe in it. And it upset me quite a bit. So I was very take the bull by the horns and go right ahead and I did a jump start in first to my mental health and I tried to get rid of my anxiety and my depression the way I fight things, which is very violently. And that did not go off very well, unfortunately. And that's my way of dealing with things. And I know there's probably some of you out there that are stressed with school, stressed with life, and you just want to put it away and you're going to ignore it. Please don't ignore it. Don't, don't take the bull by the horns. Don't just, you need help. (laughs) So please get that help. Get whatever it is that you need to do. Please understand that. Or if you're on the other side of that extreme, you're like me and you bottle everything up until it explodes in your face. Uh, I have been also diagnosed with depression, acute anxiety, and just a general sort of stress level that just makes me tired whenever I go out into social places because of the high anxiety where it just literally I'm low energy like constantly. Like, coffee can only do so much for me. And it was a thing in my family, very traditional, saying that it's if it's not physical, it's not real. So that's just yeah. been in my head my whole time. If it's not physical, it's not real. So it just builds and builds and builds. And then I started cutting myself. And then that got worse. And then just a lot of things started happening contemplating suicide, contemplating doing a lot of things, got very low in life, just a lot of bursts of emotion. I tend to feel very numb most of the times, and that's how I like to feel, though that's not the way humans function. Humans are supposed to have emotions. We're supposed to, you know, (laughs) feel things, but... For me, I just didn't want to feel anything. I just wanted to just live my life without any sort of feeling, be it positive or negative, and just just keep going forward. But again, that's not how you deal with things. You have to go to a therapist, and my therapist is just like, you need to talk, and I don't talk to people. And <laughs> even if you do talk, you got to understand, I talk a lot about my things, and just like them, I come from a different kind of family. You came from a very clustered, very nuclear, very inter-family. Very sheltered. Yeah, very sheltered family. I did not, for the beginning of my life, I have a great family now. So when I did grow up, I grew up a very deal with it now, deal with it you. You got this by yourself, and it was not the best idea. And unfortunately, if you have mental health, please do not do that. Do not do that to yourself. Take some time for you, because I did that. I, for sure, when they told me it wasn't real, I took it upon myself. And it got to a point where I've been hospitalized for it. You can't understand that. I have been hospitalized and I've puked out blood because it becomes physical. I don't know if you know this, but if you have anxiety and depression out there and you feel me, 
you know it brings pain. It brings tremendous amount of pain. It just, it brings physical pain, not only mental pain, and it's debilitating. It just, it's just the craziest thing. So if you rather bottle it up or take the bull by the horns like I do, just whatever it is, just please get some help because mental health is not a, it's not something you can just sugarcoat over no matter what way a person that you're, that you're doing this, mm -hmm. you can't. Yeah, I, I was the opposite. I was very sheltered from the world. And once I was put out into that world, I w didn't have the tools necessary to prepare me for that. Because again, I was female, Mexican traditional family. It's not real, it's not physical. Just, it was all very just akin to a fantasy going out into the real world, comparing it to the world that I live in now. And because it was very sheltered and I'd learned to be, keep quiet and bottle things in, unlike her where it's more of a loud explosion, mine is more of an implosion. I, if it's like cold or if I get very anxious, I lock up and I go mute and I cannot talk. And if I do try to, I stutter completely because I physically cannot make myself talk. And it's just, it's scary and it's bad because people want to know what's wrong, but I cannot articulate what it is. And this will happen for days. There will be days where it's been three or four days. We are best friends and there will be three or four days where I won't hear their voice. And it's nothing more communication than through a text or a small whiteboard that we purchased because it makes things a lot easier. <laughs> or like facial gestures. We're telepathic at this point. At this point, I know how to, I, we need, seriously need to learn sign language. This would help a lot. This would. It would. So it, it came to the point where both of us, where we just, we knew we needed help. I got it first, unfortunately. I do say unfortunately <laughs> because I was forced into it again. I was hospitalized. It was eating my family. I don't know how they felt, but I know for sure it looked like it, it was eating them. So I got help. Yeah, you were very stubborn about it. I was very stubborn about it. Again, because I'm a college student. I'm resilient. I ain't got no time for this, which is the biggest lie all of us will tell ourselves. We're college students. We're stressed on every level possible. If you're taking more than three classes, I pray for you. That's all I'm going to say, especially certain majors. They just kill you. So forced to go to therapy. I was a hypocrite and I'm like, you need to go to therapy, it'll help you. And you're just like, what? And she's just like, why don't you go to therapy? I'm like, I'm fine. Bullshit. Because uh, again, I had that mentality that all my family is like, it's just in your head. You need to pray. You need to do all this. Go in your family. And I don't, I'm an atheist, just putting that out there. And that made it worse. <laughs> Not the atheism, but praying, faith, just piling all of that up. And it just made all the other things worse. Being part of the LGBT, being a female biologically, being in a traditional home that wants you to be a housewife with children. And I didn't speak my truth until uh, the day I went to a doctor and they did a general mental screening and they're just like, you need to go get a psychiatric scan. And that is when my parents finally gave in and like, okay, maybe this is a problem. And it is, and it's that kind of thing it, that you need. You need a scan because a lot of people won't believe these feelings. We live in a culture where everyone wants attention, where everyone wants to see things. You get what I mean? So people don't really understand that this is a problem and it kills a lot of people, unfortunately. Recently here in our own UTSA, they did, they put up flags for how many teens had died in college after asking for help. And the number was, uh, it made me want to tear up because even they asked for help and even like that, they didn't make it. And I'm lucky that I got the help. I went to therapy. Uh, I had I had uh, one person that helped me in particular, Miss Melissa, I love you, pieces. Um, and yeah, I would cry my eyes out and that's what you need sometimes. You just need that support. You need, you learn tricks when you go to therapy. They help you with basic stuff like that. Again, all this is not something you can cure. Anxiety, depression, all this, it's not. Yeah, sometimes there will be therapists that are gonna be like, oh, we can cure you of this, or you'll be cured of that. It's, mental health isn't something that can be cured. It's not like a Band-Aid that can be slapped on a knee. It's something that's gonna 
take time and effort. And we all know none of us got that effort. I know I don't. <laughs> Especially as college students, because we don't have time to take care of ourselves. You know how they always, there's always that, if whatever you use, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, there's always that treat yourself thing kind of going on. And you really should take that seriously because you don't, you don't. Honestly, you say you do, but you don't. When was the last time you sat down and really enjoyed something? Because again, all these things, they're not, they will come back. You'll have good days. You'll have, you'll have amazing days. You'll have an amazing week, but then there's just that one day that makes you feel shitty. Mm -hmm. And that one day will turn into one week. And that one week can turn into one month and it will just keep snowballing. It definitely will keep snowballing. Yeah, and I know there's concerns about medication. Medication is a very tricky thing, especially when dealing with mental health because I know from you, dosage matters dosage does matter a lot again for people who don't want to believe in mental health if you don't want to believe that it's it's something in your brain we can break it down for you scientifically this is what it is it's a hormone imbalance so basically what it is your brain is releasing all this hormone when you're freaking out when you're scared or whatever if you're in a hostile situation so what's happening is that because you're feeling like this, your brain's releasing that hormone constantly. So what medication does, some medications, this is not to generalize, please, if you're gonna do medication, go see a professional, go see what you need, go see a doctor. But for me, that's the kind of thing I had. So I take medication personally to lower down all that, to make me calm enough to be me again. And dosage matters, there will be days where I'd be so paranoid because the dosage was so high, I would be scared of my two-year-old cousin. She's two, and I wouldn't want her to touch me, all because the dosage was like a gram too high, which is, think about that, a two-year-old, you being scared of a two-year-old, that's fucking crazy. And I, my doctors have recommended me dosages, but again, with the family, they put into their head that medication, no bueno, that means you're legit crazy. I. I've been seriously considering it because my anxiety has gotten to the point where I can't eat. I have probably developed an eating disorder because I, my body is so anxious it cannot keep down food or I cannot eat as much as I used to. And I'm a hefty person and I need those calories, but I can't, like I physically can't. Or like sometimes like it'll get so bad, like if the, if the room is just a smidge too cold, I'll start convulsing and curling up in myself. I'll fall flat on my face convulsing on the floor and not being able to talk because it's cold. And because my anxiety could not handle it because it's just like, we're in danger, let's go. Yeah, and it's basic stuff like that. In teens like this, again, I have medication, they don't. And it's crazy to think that people don't talk about this because people see medication as a weakness, first off. And I know it's scary, and it will be for the first couple of days. I went through that. And if you do have medication out there and you can hear this, please don't stop taking it. That is a big, giant withdrawal. Do not. Trust her. Do not. I did that. Trust and that her. was. It was bad. <laughs> I puked my guts out for about a week because my body could not maintain homeostasis, which is like perfect level. Because I was like, why did you stop? What's going on? We had it one day. We don't have it the next. And usually it takes a couple of days. So for the first couple of days, you're like, oh, I'm great. I'm, I'm fantastic. I don't need those meds. Give it like, give, trust me, give it like four days and you'll be wanting to cry because everything hurts again. Because again, anxiety, depression, PTSD. If you're, and let me clear this up. All this can come from anywhere. Okay, we have it because of different reasons. So you have it because, well. Yeah, very sheltered, very shock shelled, very shy low self-esteem, <laughs> bullying, genetics. Genetics is a big thing. Yeah, genetics does play a role in it. And most people will think that it yeah. doesn't. It's just that some people were raised differently than others. And if you're, if you're meant to say your feelings, great. You're probably dealing it a lot better than most of us. But again, people our age, again, with the society we live in, if we post anything remotely suicidal, people are gonna say, what? She wants attention, he wants attention, they want attention. No, people have bad days and it's okay to have them. You know what I mean? Just have them and if you, you're having them constantly and they're getting out of hand, just 
please, you know, don't keep it. Don't keep it a you. Go find somewhere. And there's a lot of places they'll do it. And if you're concerned about money because you're a college student, there's a lot even more they have it for free. It's just crazy to me. Mm -hmm. The wellness center here in UTSA, they have free counseling. Yes. They give prescriptions. They have a walk-in Wednesday that you can go in and like get counseling for that day and also schedule consistent counseling with certain therapists i am going to that and so are you yeah i'm yeah. trying to get into that too so we're going to that both of that and that's kind of sort of been helping and it does it really does help to put into perspective because again i just want to reiterate especially a lot because of what's going on right now in the world and stuff you don't think that you're as important or you don't think that you're as valid, The wor that word has been upsetting me everywhere nowadays. You are, and mental health is definitely a big issue. So for people that out there that say it's not real, go piss off, I'm sorry, it's definitely real, and probably a lot more people than you think have it. You would be surprised at how many people have it and just refuse to admit it. It's not that people are magically being diagnosed with depression and anxiety. No, it's just recently we've just found words for it. People have always had it. PTSD was known as like the soldier syndrome or sadness. Like depression no. was just like women hysteria. Anxiety was just paranoia and hermits that stayed in their house all days. There are words. Things have been discovered. And... As an English major, it very much angers me that people use mental health as the basis of like those angsty writers and like, yes, Ooh. people, artists, they use their pain to sometimes produce their art, but it does not mean that it is pleasant. I know from experience, when you are in pain, it's not fun. Just because we produce something pretty out of it does not mean it was fun to get there. And, and that has a lot to say, especially right now, because again, it's just the trend. A lot of great artists, my perfect example would be Robin Williams. Mm -hmm. If you know who he is, God bless your heart, honestly, it's just, he was such a great comedian, a great actor, such a fun person. Everyone who ever knew him was just like, oh, he's the happiest person you can be. And he kills himself because of depression. Because you never know. You can literally, if you, if you, if you see your friends and there's more than five of you, one of you has something. I think if I remember correctly, the stats were one in every three or one in every five people have it. it one form or shape or another. And it comes in everybody. Don't, don't say it don't. It comes in females, males, every kind of division you can find of people. You cannot say that somebody doesn't have it. And if you have it, just admit to it, please just, and it's fine if you do have it. And like, some people are not gonna lie, some people are gonna judge you. They will. But those people don't matter. It's your life, you need to take care of it because you only got one of it. Who knows what's out there afterwards? Yeah, you gotta take care of yourself first because if you're not good, if you're not in balance, things around you are not gonna work. You can't kill yourself. You can't burn the candle at both ends too long because you'll reach your limit. So please, anything you can do, just be you and do what you need to do, especially with mental health related items. You can't, again, this is a process of time. You have to learn tricks to get around this. I know I have a couple. I don't know if you have any. Um, basic breathing where if you don't breathe from, you don't breathe from the chest. To calm yourself down, you breathe in, inflate your stomach, and then you breathe out. What this does, it's an akin, it's akin to REM sleep. When you're in that deep sleep, that's how you breathe. So it's getting your body to calm down. And since I have more of a locking muscle motion, uh, they also told me to do a muscle stimulation where I like lock and release like about three or four times to get my muscles relaxed and like, you know, acquainted with themselves again my thing and see everybody's differently i can't do breathing because then i start hyperventilating that upsets me so my thing is i like being in cramped corners ironically i don't 
I used to think I was claustrophobic, but being in a cramped corner, underneath a desk, inside a closet, anywhere I can fit, like really tightly, I will find a way to squeeze myself in there and if it has to be dark. If I can't, I will find anything to blindfold my eyes with and that's what calms me down personally. In crowds, if I start freaking out in crowds, I start counting things. You get what I mean? There's, there's three tables, there's four tables, there's five tables, there's seven squares. Whatever is akin to you, you can start doing it. And don't think you have to do it overnight too. No, like that's, that's steps. This is legit steps. Yeah, a lot of steps. And it's also, don't think just because you're like introverted that, oh, they must have like some sort of, a, no, I'm an introvert. I'm an extrovert, extremely extroverted. Yeah, I need to recharge by being alone. And like sometimes crowded places, they do overwhelm me. And they sometimes overwhelm you, even though you like being social. And I love being around people. People are what make the world go around for me. Just being around them, hearing their stories, being out there, doing things, having fun. That for me is my day, even though it's different from theirs. And even like that, I will get overwhelmed. I will want to start crying. I will want to start pulling my hair out and all for something that I can't explain and you won't be able to explain it. And then sometimes I actually really do need people. Sometimes like I'll be so holed up in myself in like uh, my own room or something, I'll they'll feel this crushing loneliness that like I have a thing where sometimes I can accept hugs or sometimes I can't. She's the exception. Uh, but like it's this yeah. crushing loneliness where I just need somebody to at least be next to me. They don't even need to be touching me. I just need to know there was somebody there. And I know my people have told me, oh, just because they have told me like, oh, this is why you should like be a Christian or like pray to God, heal this. And, but it's not the same for me. I don't believe in anything. So basically I'm just talking to an empty room and I'm alone again. Just, if you really, really do need something, and I'm not saying on our behalf, on anybody's behalf, and if you're one of those people that refuses to admit mental illness or mental health or anything you believe in, if you refuse to admit it for you, which is, I recommend you always do it for you first, do it for the people around you, and that's going to be our last point. If you're not going to do it for you, do it for someone you love, because if you do something to yourself, understand, the pain is not gonna go away. You're just shifting it to somebody else. You're shifting that pain to your parents, to your girlfriend, to your boyfriend, to your kids. So please, if you have a mental health problem, if you have any kind of mental illness, don't, don't let it get bad because the people that love you, it's gonna hurt. And you may think you don't have anyone, but trust me, there, there are people that will see you and they will hurt because you are hurting. I know that every time I contemplated suicide, I always thought of my two younger brothers. I always thought about how, oh, I don't want them to find me like this or like that. They were always in the front of my mind because they're like my number one priority. And I want to see them grow up and I want to see them graduate and I want to see them do great things in life. So I live for them. And then I live for the people around me that care about me. And even just a little I live for myself because at one point we got to start living for ourselves yeah so just day by day step by step and if not for you for someone else and trust me you'll do great just baby steps just start with step one and admit to yourself that maybe you do have a problem if not to anyone else to you and if you don't want to start with helping get help from somebody online is a great place to start honestly and you can do it anonymously sometimes. So just, you know, take care. Be you. Okay. So long as you're breathing. We're you're fine. <laughs> we're doing great. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> great. No, I'm laughing. I can't. I don't want to cry. Thanks for watching. Click our logo to subscribe or click one of the videos for more from the Paisano. Leave a comment letting us know your thoughts and what you'd like to see us cover next.